okay, I'm going to go through and debunk this clip from a Stephen Anderson sermon where he's coming out and denying what the Bible says, that Paul is our apostle and we should be getting our doctrine from Paul. And this is the mess you get yourself into when you are non-dispensational. Now, yes, the Bible does say in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And 1 Timothy 6.3 does say we should consent to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. But 2 Timothy 2.15 says we have to rightly divide the word of the truth. What does it mean to divide? Dividing. You separate. Okay? This is the mess you get into when you don't really divide. You think the whole Bible is for doctrine and basically is for us today when it's clearly not. And here are some dispensational changes in the Bible that Stephen Anderson seems to ignore. So, Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 and Exodus 31, 15 to 16 both say you have to keep the Sabbath. And the Bible even says a death penalty on those who don't keep the Sabbath. But Romans chapter 3 verse 9 does not mention the Sabbath as one of the commands for a New Testament Christian. What happened there? A dispensational change. Okay, we, we, They went from being you have to keep the Sabbath to now you're not under the law anymore. You don't have to keep the Sabbath. Second, second uh, dispensational change, some notes I've written down. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 say that the gospel of the kingdom was being preached. However, Paul was not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Paul was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 10.14 and Romans 15.19. So what is it? Is there a contradiction? No. A dispensational change there. You rightly divide the word of truth. You see, there's a change there. You know, Old Testament to New Testament. Under the law to under grace. You know? And then um, Exodus chapter 29, verse 36 to 37, and Leviticus chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, say that an animal sacrifice was needed to cover sins and to atone for sins. However, Acts chapter 13, verse 38 and 39, Colossians 2, 13 to 14, and Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, say that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from sins. So again, what is it? There's a dispensational change there. You went from animal sacrifices animal sacrifices needed to cover sins to now our sins are covered and washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And they'll say, well, saints in the Old Testament were saved by looking forward to the cross. Not not true because there are verses, like in the book of Luke, where the apostles were basically told about what's going to happen. They're saying it's written by the prophets that Jesus is going to die on the cross. And they're saying, you know, no, you know, they don't believe it. In fact, let me just show you one such verse. Luke chapter 9. I believe it's in Luke chapter 9. Basically, it's in Luke chapter 9, verses 21 to 22, but Jesus Christ foretells what's going to happen to him. He foretells it. And basically, in verse number 45, in Luke chapter 9, verse 43 to 45, he foretells it again. And in verse 45, it says they understood not the saying. They didn't understand what they were saying. You know? So if it's a, some kind of teaching that they've always been saved but looking forward to the cross, how does that work? And the same, you have the same dilemma in Luke chapter 18, verse 31 to 34, where Jesus foretells his death a third time, and he, they still don't understand it. You know, it says, it says in verse 34, and they understood none of these things. So again, if it's an Old Testament teaching that they're saved but they're looking forward to the cross, like Anderson tries to say, how does that work? Should they have understood it? Because Jesus has, has explained to them what's going to happen. So no, they're not saved by looking forward to the cross. And in our dispensational change, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 6, Jesus says not to go into the, to the way of the Gentiles, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, says that Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But in Romans 11, 13, and Romans 15, 16, Paul says that he's the apostle of the Gentiles. And 1 Timothy 2, 7, and 2 Timothy 1, 11, say that Paul is the teacher of the Gentiles. So again, is there a contradiction? Or is there a dispensational change there? You went from basically the gospel being given to the, the Jews to now the, the Gentiles and the Jews. A dispensational change there. That's rightly dividing the word of truth. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Absolutely. You know, all we don't we don't deny that. You know, people who are dispensational, we don't deny that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. But you have to rightly divide it. We're not keeping the Sabbath. We're not doing animal sacrifices. You know, that was under the law. We're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. So this is the mess you get yourself into. This is the mess that Anderson gets himself into when he does not really divide the word of truth. And of course, he has to try to change what it means. He says, well, really dividing doesn't mean this, you know, he has to change what it means. But here is 
the uh, clips of Anderson just spouting his, his heresy on just non-dispensational, just proving what, what a novice the guy is. So let's get right into it. And they put the epistles of Paul above Jesus. And this is a very strange doctrine. It's called hyper-dispensationalism, okay? Well, Anderson just proved his ignorance. He does not know what hyper-dispensationalism is. Hyper-dispensationalism says there's two bodies of Christ. There was basically the body, and then Paul was a separate body of Christ, and, you know, it is heresy. Basically, there's the body before Paul, and then, you know, it, it's, it's a weird heresy, hyper-dispensationalism. It is not scriptural at all. But what he's attacking here is basically people going to Paul for their doctrine, primarily to Paul, because, again, Paul is our apostle. Romans 11, 13, Romans 15, 16. He's our apostle. As, as Gentiles, he's our apostle. So a person who knows the Bible would obviously know our doctrine, especially for our gospel presentation, should primarily come from the Pauline epistles. There is some good stuff in the book of John. I do believe the book of John is a transitional from under the law to under grace because there's a lot of things in the book of John that mirror and are very similar to what Paul wrote. Uh, but again, our doctrine should primarily come from Paul. Our gospel should come from the book of John. I'd say you start there to Philemon. That's where our gospel should come from. And when it comes to church policy, you go to Paul. When it comes to, you know, the, the doctrines like eternal security, you get it from Paul. So what, that's what he's attacking there. Because again, hyper dispensationalism is a heresy. And they're, they're not two bodies of Christ. But he doesn't know what hyper dispensationalism is. He thinks that going to Paul for your primarily doctrines, primarily for your doctrines, is hyper dispensationalism. He also tries to say that dispensational salvation is hyper dispensationalism. You know, he doesn't know what it is. But let's continue. And hyper dispensationalism is also sometimes known as Romans to Philemon dispensationalism. Um, yeah, you go to Romans to Philemon. Again, Paul is our apostle, Romans eleven thirteen. So we should primarily be getting our doctrines from Paul. You know, we're not Jews under the law. We don't, we don't go back to the law of Moses for polity. Obviously, we'd go back to find what is sin. I mean, obviously, there's some sins that are condemned back in the law of Moses that definitely apply for today. But, you know, because Anderson believes we should be putting sodomites and adulterers to death. So he goes back to the law of Moses, but we're not under the law of Moses. You go to Paul, okay? This is what he's attacking there. He's attacking what the Bible says, that Paul is our apostle. We, we should primarily, not, not just only from Paul, but primarily get our doctrines from Paul. He doesn't understand that. He does not really divide the word of truth. Or, or they'll, they'll talk about how, you know, the Pauline epistles, only from Romans to Philemon, you know, of course, don't let it bother you that in your 1611 King James Version, it says the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. Don't let that bother you. When it comes to the book of Hebrews, it is written by Paul. I do believe that. But who is it written to? Hebrews. Jews. And who is it? When is it time? When is it? When, I'll say it this way. Who is it for? It's for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's called Hebrews. And the reason why we know that the book of Hebrews is not written to Christians it's because every Pauline epistle from Romans to Philemon begins with calling the believers people who are basically in Christ, you know, to them that are in Christ, you know, the saints. There's not one mention of someone being in Christ in the, Paul, in, uh, the book of Hebrews. So it's not addressed to Gentile saved believers because there's no, no mention of someone, because being a Christian means you're in Christ. Well, if there's no mention of people being in Christ in the book of Hebrews and onwards, it's obviously not written to Christians. That simple. It's written to Hebrews, Jews, just like Matthew chapter 24, where he tries to go to to prove his heretical post-trib rapture heresy. It's written to Jews. You can see Matthew chapter 24, verse 16, Matthew chapter 24, verse 20, for proof on that. It's for Jews, Hebrews, not for Christians. So while it is written by Paul, we don't go to Hebrews for our, primarily for our doctrine. You know, again, instruction in righteousness, definitely. The Bible can, part, like the Old Testament, can be used for instruction and righteousness. But I'd say when it comes to our gospel presentation, we should only go to Paul. That's my belief on that. But, you know, they just say it's just Romans to Philemon, right? One of these guys, even a prophet of their own, Bill Grady, who, you know, a lot of people have probably heard the name. He wrote a famous book about the King James Bible a few decades ago. He's kind of a has-been. But anyway, this guy, Bill Grady, total unsaved false prophet, 
he literally, this is what he said about our church. I'm going to give you the exact quote that he said about Faith Forward Baptist Church. Quote, they absolutely reject Paul's preeminence and they're always wanting to see what Jesus had to say about something. And that's the Faithful Word Baptist Church. Now again, the Bible does say in 1 Timothy 6.3, we should consent to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. But Paul is preeminent, in a sense, because he is our apostle. Again, Romans 11.13, Romans 15.16, he is our apostle as Gentiles. So, in that sense, he is preeminent. Because Jesus Christ, you have to be careful with the Gospels, basically, because, again, Jesus Christ's earthly ministry was primarily to the Jewish people. Okay, Paul is our apostle. But Anderson, he can't see that. This is, again, the mess you get into when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. This is the heresy that non-dispensational heretics like Anderson get themselves into. That's verbatim what he said. You, you, can, you, can, you can go on YouTube and hear him say that Paul is preeminent. And this, th I'm going to read it for you again. This is exactly what he said. About us, specifically, our church, they absolutely reject Paul's preeminence, and they're always wanting to see what Jesus had to say about something. And that's the Faithful Word Baptist Church. Well, <laughs> you got us. Ouch. You nailed us. Okay. Yeah, we want to see what Jesus said about things. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't believe Paul is preeminent because we believe all scripture is equally authoritative and equally inspired. And you'll see this always with non-dispensational heretics like Anderson. They always have to say, well, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, implying that dispensational believers basically ignore parts of the Bible. We don't. We rightly divide it. Okay? We realize that we're not Jews under the law. So we don't, you know, obviously we can go back to the law to see what is sin. But we don't apply the death penalty like Anderson says we should do to sodomites or adulterers. We don't do that, okay? We know it's a sin because it is condemned back then. But we rather divide it and say this was for under the law, under the grace. You know, and we should consent to the words of Jesus Christ. But again, who was Jesus Christ sent to? Let me bring up the scripture again. It was Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 6. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus Christ was sent unto Israel, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, he came unto his own, and his own received them not. Let me, let me pull up the verse on that. Because Jesus Christ was sent to the Jews, not to Gentiles. It's that, it's that simple. And then when you really divide the word of truth, you realize that. John chapter 1, verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. He came unto the Jews. That's who he was sent to. So you got to be careful with basically going to the Gospels and applying it for today. Because, you know, again, it is instruction in righteousness, but it is for the Jewish people. That's who he was sent to. So, and again, I'm going to get accused, oh, you're, you're ignoring Jesus Christ in the words. No, I don't, okay? I'm rather dividing the word of truth. The Gospels are good for instruction in righteousness, absolutely. But you've got to be careful to rather divide it. So, don't be deceived by heretics like Anderson. Um, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.